Hey everyone, welcome to another video, and I've been doing a lot of rankings lately for like directors and movies, but I thought I'd do some more rankings for directors that a lot of people don't know about, like when I did the rankings of Joe Johnson. So the director I chose this time was the director Martin Brest. And yeah, you, you, if you don't know who Martin Brest is, you'll soon find out now after watching this list. I guarantee you've probably seen at least one of his movies. If you haven't seen any of them, good, maybe you'll watch a video. And yeah, because he's directed a lot of good movies. He's only directed six movies, but five out of the six are really good. The other one, uh, not so much, but still. Here is my, rank, my ranking of Martin Bress's movies from my least favorite to my favorite. Alright, coming in number six is the movie Geely. Yeah, Martin Bress directed this pile of fucking shit. Okay, yes, everyone knows Geely is one of the worst movies ever made. And it is. It's it's up there with The Room, Battlefield Earth, Batman and Robin, Birdemic, Last Airbender, Dragon Ball Evolution, Jack and Jill, Grown Ups, Grown Ups 2, Bucky Larson, Born to be a Star. Where am I going with this? Anyways, yes, uh, Geely. This movie is so bad. It's so terrible. The stars are Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez. I never liked Jennifer Lopez. This is her worst performance, but yeah, it's not saying much because she's got a lot of bad performances. But I hate her in this movie. She's so bad. Really, really terrible. Ben Affleck. I love Ben Affleck. I love him as a director like Gone Baby Gone, Argo in the Town. Fantastic movies. I even enjoy him as an actor. You know, I love him in the Kevin Smith movies and stuff. And I do think he has potential. He has a real potential to play Batman. Like, I can't wait for, to see him play Batman in the new ba Batman vs. Superman movie. But him in this movie was so terrible. This is, I think, when they were dating. So, like, th why is their chemistry so bad? They're a couple. Like, you was some of your real chemistry in real life. Maybe they actually really didn't have any chemistry in real life. But maybe that's why they sucked in this movie. This movie was so bad. And it had, like, other, like, decent supporting cast characters, like Al Pacino in it, and he was bad. And it had Justin Bartha in it, and he was bad. At least this movie was just horrendous. The writing was the worst. The direction, the worst. The performances, horrible. Everything about this movie was bad. I didn't know if this movie was trying to be, like, a thriller, or a comedy, or a drama, or a crime movie. I don't know what the hell this movie was trying to do. It was so sloppy. I didn't enjoy any of this movie. Actually, when I first saw this movie, I couldn't even watch it all. I watched the first 20 minutes, and I'm like, nope, that's it. Then years later, my sister put this on the TV. She's like, ooh, let's watch this. I'm like, please, let's not. But then she's like, come on, it's probably not that bad. I'm like, oh, what a bet. So we watched the whole movie. She's like, after it was done, she was like, why did we watch this? I'm like, you made us watch this. And yeah, this movie was so terrible. I, I cannot possibly possibly urge people to stay away from this movie. I think everyone has stayed away from it, but that's good, because this movie is an abomination, and the only thing it should be used for is toilet paper after you take your nice, steaming, hot pile of shit. Fuck this movie. Coming to number five? Okay, let's get a little more lighthearted now. Alright, my number five is Going in Style. Actually, I just watched this movie just the other day, because I had to watch all of Martin Bress's movies. I'm like, I've seen all his movies. Then I realized he actually had a first movie, and I actually thought, like, Going in Style is actually Martin Bress's first movie, and it's a good movie. He wrote and directed this movie, and he did a good job. Uh, there's some good comedy, there's some good drama. You got, like, Art Carney, and, like, some classic actors in it, and it's good. I enjoyed it. It's not amazing. Like, uh, if you like some classic movies, you might enjoy it yourself. If you're, like, big fan of, like, some classic actors, you'll have fun with this movie, and actually, I don't mean to be insulting, this is actually a good movie for old people. <laughs> I don't mean to be insulting, this movie is kind of like watching, like, Last Vegas, and the second best, and the first best Exotic Narrow Goat Hotel, whatever the fuck you call those movies. Yeah, those movies are, like, great for old people. This is actually probably the best, out of those ones, this is, like, the best old people movie, because I, I still enjoyed myself. Would I ever watch this movie again? Hell no, but it's still good. I laughed a few times. I Some of the dramatic scenes got to me, and yeah, the performances were good, especially by Eric Carney, and yeah, I had fun with it. I, en I enjoyed it for a one-time watch, and if you want a one-time watch kind of movie, give Going and Style a chance. It's pretty good. Pretty good. Coming number four is Meet Joe Black. Yes, Meet Joe Black. This movie is like split down the middle on Rotten Tomatoes. This is like, a, like an even 50%, and... I really like this movie, and I don't get why people hate on it. Well, like, it's some, like, there's some pacing issues, there's a little bit of script issues, and it's a very long movie, it's about three hours long. 
But I liked it. I really enjoyed it. I love the story of the Grim Reaper coming to Earth and everything. And Brad Pitt plays the Grim Reaper. Basically, he experiences what humans experience in, like, you know, jobs, food, love, everything about that. The meaning of life and all that shit. And basically, yeah, it, this is a very good movie. And it stars uh, Brad Pitt and Anthony Hopkins. And they're both very, very good. And I love how he just, like, randomly comes up with his name, Joe Black. And it kind of suits, like, the Grim Reaper kind of style. And, yeah, Brad Pitt is very good in this movie. I found him very, very, um... I like, uh, stories about people who are, like, a fish out of the sea. Like, uh, experiencing worlds they don't get. And, like, yeah, like, ooh, what's this, what's this? Or, like, when he experiences peanut butter for the first time, and he looks off the spoon, he's like, hmm, this is not bad, this is not bad. And, like, learning different words and stuff in different cultures. And it was, it was just interesting to watch. And I loved, uh, watching Brad Pitt in this movie. He played the role very, very well. And Anthony Hopkins stole the movie. He was fantastic in this movie. And I actually enjoyed the the chemistry between Brad Pitt and uh, the girl who plays Anthony Hopkins' daughter. I don't know the actress, but their chemistry was good. I bought the romance. And, yeah, the ending is very bittersweet, but it does work. I, it, it's a little cheesy when it, right when it ends. I like when uh, him and Anthony Hopkins disappear at the end. That's cool. But, like, you know, that they bring Brad Pitt back and shit. Like, that was, I didn't care for that. But I actually wanted them to go a little more darker with the ending, but... Still, I enjoyed this movie. The writing was fine. The directing was fine. Uh, Brad Pitt was great. Anthony Hopkins was good. Even though it does have some pacing issues and it's a very long movie, I never got bored. I enjoyed it. I still enjoy it to this day. And yeah, I can watch it every now and then. I like me Joe Black. Give it a watch if you have not seen it. Coming number three is Midnight Run. Yes, that this movie stars Rob De Niro and Charles Grodin. And yeah, this movie is basically about Rob De Niro plays a bounty hunter and he gets offered like $100,000 to go catch this investor kind of guy. I don't know if he's an investor. But he's basically a rich guy and basically has to go catch him, turn him into the police, and he gets a, a huge reward from it. But then he finds out there's some bad people after him. He, he may, there's some cops that are some bad. And basically, they're on the run from cops, mobsters, and crime bosses, and all that shit. And yeah, this is like an action comedy. And this movie is hilarious. I love Midnight Run. This is one of Martin Bress's funniest movies. And I love uh, Rob De Niro and Charles Grodin in this movie. Their chemistry is just solid. I love them, too, in this movie. The way they work off each other is just freaking comedic gold. The action's good. The adventure part of it is very good. And I love Rob De Niro. Okay, this character would be kind of like me if I had to go through all this shit. And yeah, he's just such, he's just pissed off all the time. He's just like, I just want my fucking money. And yeah, he's got like this rich guy trying to smooth talk him. And yeah, it's very funny. And I love this movie. And this is like one of uh, Martin Bress's lighthearted kind of movies. And it's rated R. Like it's got the R rating. Like it's got like F words and everything. And, yeah, I enjoyed it. It's a good movie. If you love, like, movies, like, adventure, action, comedy kind of movies, like, buddy cop kind of movies, even though they're not technically cops, but, yeah, like, buddy comedies, good buddy comedies, you'll love this movie. It's a good movie. Love Midnight Run. Coming number two is Beverly Hills Cop. Yes, I said Midnight Run's one of uh, Martin Bress's funniest comedies. I meant that. But it's not his all-time funniest comedy, because Beverly Hills Cop is. I love Beverly Hills Cop. The sequels... Yeah, the second one's and eh, third one kind of sucked, but I love this movie. This is so funny. Originally, Sylvester Stallone was actually going to be the, the lead character. Uh, what's the character's name? Uh, Axel Foley. That's his name. Axel Foley. Eddie Murphy plays the lead character, Axel Foley. And basically, his uh, old friend dies. And basically, he goes to Beverly Hills to find out who killed him and everything. And basically, he has to deal with, like, drug dealers slash gay artists kind of thing. But, yeah, it's really funny. This movie is hilarious. It's a great action comedy. And Eddie Murphy is fantastic. And he also got, like, Judge Reinhold and stuff like that. Yeah, Ronnie Cox in it. And it's a very, very good movie. I love this movie. And every time I watch it, it puts a smile on my face. I love Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy in the 80s is, like, some of the best movies. Like, Treading Places, Coming to America, and Beverly Hills Cop and stuff. Eddie Murphy in the 80s was just, like, comedic gold. And this is my favorite, one of my all-time favorite Eddie Murphy movies. And it's one of my all-time favorite Martin Breast movies. And it's awesome. Love Beverly Hills Cop. Gotta stir it up now. Gotta get it up now. And my number one favorite Martin Breast movie is Scent of a Woman. Yes, he's done a lot of comedy movies, but this was a straight-up serious movie. This won Al Pacino's Academy Award. And that kind of shocks me. He's great in this movie, Al Pacino, but like, I'm like, Al Pacino never won any other Academy Awards for any other movies he did. Like, Dog Day Afternoon, Godfather, Serpico, Carlito's Way, like, no Oscar wins for those. But yeah, he won it for this, and he is brilliant in this movie. I love this movie. The story of this movie is about a high school kid who basically has to take care of an old blind guy for basically a weekend. 
And basically, for the weekend, he uh, Al Pacino plays the old buying guy. He takes him on this trip, and basically, and he basically goes to like a fancy hotel. He goes to Al Pacino's brother's house. They get to his cars. Basically, go to nice fancy restaurants. And basically, the kid who was played by Chris O'Neill is wondering why they're doing all this. And you actually find out. I might as well spoil it. Al Pacino wants to kill himself. Basically, he's, basically he's suicidal, and basically Chris O'Donnell wants to save Al Pacino's life. He wants to try to convince him that life is actually worth living for. And basically, Al Pacino likes to learn about Chris O'Donnell's life, and Chris O'Donnell likes to learn about Al Pacino's life. And basically, it's basically about these two people, this high school kid and this old blind guy, and basically they have to learn about each other's lives, and basically have to save the main character's life, Al Pacino. And honestly, this is a very gripping, emotional, beautifully told movie, and I love this movie. Al Pacino's performance is fantastic. Chris O'Donnell, not a good actor, but he's good in this movie, and the chemistry between these two is really, really well, well done, and it's very well directed. It's a very well directed movie. It's a very well structuralized movie, and it has a lot of heart, a lot of motion, and it always gets to me every single time. I love Scent of a Woman. I love the speech Al Pacino gives at the very end of this movie, and I just love how it all ends, and I just love everything about this movie. It's a long movie, but it's a long gripping, emotional film, and I love it. Scent of Woman is a brilliant movie. Love it. Al Pacino got his Oscar. Very well deserved. He deserves more Oscars, but I'm glad he got for this movie. He's fantastic, and this movie this movie is fantastic. hoo So yeah, that was my ranking of Martin Brest's movies, my least favorite to my favorite. So please, comment below, give me your ranking of Martin Brest's movies to your favorite. If you have not seen all his movies, just tell me which ones you like the most and like the least. So yeah, comment below, let me know, give me your rankings. And as always, if you like this video, please like and subscribe to this channel, and join the dark side.